Uh, Michel, please speak loud. Okay. So, Minimasa is a digital asset management system that is built on top of Drupal. Drupal is a content management system written in PHP. Um, Minimasa can be viewed as a Drupal video distribution. We are working with IKEA, a commercial vendor party here in the USA behind Drupal, uh, in making Minimasa a full blown Drupal video distribution. Um, it started out as a media asset management system. We created it uh, from 2006 2007 uh, for uh, the Dutch institutions Kennisnet and Surfnet. Uh, they commissioned work to create a new generic asset management system to replace their current systems. Um, so it started out as a media asset management system, and from there it grew to a full blown digital asset management system. Um, First of all, it is a back-end piece of software. There is no fancy user interface. It is a system providing you with about 180 plus REST calls, web services, which you can use to build uh, video websites, uh, document management websites, uh, archives, etc. There are, however, some front-ends. Uh, I will show some examples later of front-ends that have already been built. And there is the media a site builder, which is again a Drupal uh, version which is prepared with several modules in which you can click on to the media box backend and start pretty soon with your own, well, YouTube-like website. Um, and you might come to YouTube with that? Yes, sure, five minutes. Um, from the first development on, it has really evolved towards uh, becoming a more gener generic system. You can also view it as a generic distributed database with uh, standardized metadata. Uh, there was a project in Iceland of people who used Media Moza to build a uh, SOS solution, a network based storage on top of Media Moza because of the distributed features. So you can really store and retrieve any digital asset. This is not very special in itself. Uh, so it is videos, of course, audio, media, um, but also documents, PDFs, uh, any kind of file really. Um, but MediaMosa has special built-in features for specific kinds of digital assets. So, uh, for instance, for video, there are transcoding features. For images, there are conversion features to work with images. For documents, there are features to turn PDFs into text and make them fully uh, full text searchable, for instance. And PowerPoint presentations, can you put them through in it? Yep, you can. Um, to describe these assets in the system, we use standardized uh, metadata formats, uh, open standards across the board, so Dublin Core, Polyphile Dublin Core, IEEE 1 and CZP, that's the Dublin Core standard which is being phased out at the moment. So each asset carries along with it this bag of metadata which describes the asset. There is both descriptive metadata which tells you what kind of title of the media for instance, what the author is, what is happening inside the media, inside the movie. And there is technical metadata, which is derived automatically by the system from the media, which tells you, for instance, frame rates, frame sizes, codecs used, uh, types of text, UTF, etc. All information is structured into assets, which consist of media files, one or more. And assets can be organized into collections. Um, the most common use case is that an asset contains one original media file, a video for instance, and then a number of derived media files. So for instance you put in a high definition original media file, and then you automatically transfer this high definition version into a version for a phone, for a laptop, for Apple, Android, etc. And all these conversions you can program in uh, 
transcoding profiles and will autom automatically happen when you upload a video into the system. Another specific feature is authentication and authorization. All assets carry access control lists with them, which allow you to set specific permissions on these assets for end users. So unlike, <coughs> unlike for instance, YouTube or Vimeo, where everybody has access to almost everything, you can uh, dedicate specific media, groups of media, collections to specific audiences, for instance, using domains, realms, uh, which is like federated login entities, users, or groups of the above. So this allows you to, to put fine-grained uh, authentication on these, uh, on these assets. Um, other standards we use is the common query language. So once the assets with their media metadata are inside the system, you can use the contextual query language, which is uh, SRU, SRW based, so you put a URL in and you get a list of asset IDs back from, from the system that are conform to your search. Um, CQL, we support level 2, which means that uh, every aspect of the CQL standard is covered by the Mimosa, and so we allow you to make uh, all kinds of queries possible in there. Uh, behind the scenes, we use Apache Solar to Index all of the metadata that goes along with the assets. Um, we also support the OAI PMH, the Open Archives Initiative Protocol for Metadata Harvesting. Um, this is a way to share your metadata with other sites that support this OHI, uh, OAI PMH protocol. Um, so you do, you do not have to share the media themselves, but you can share your metadata. And in this metadata can be links to your original media files on your website and people can then present in their search results uh, assets from your collection. For instance, uh, the Dutch Institute of Sound and Vision has a, an a educational platform called Edit. They harvest from uh, about 13 or 14 sources using OER PMH. Uh, the National Archive, for instance, uh, Naturalis, Institutes like these, and then they present these search results from this harvested metadata in their own application. And once people want to play the media or watch uh, watch the video or listen to audio, it will go to the original server from, for instance, the, the National Archive. Um, we have an OAI PMH provider. The harvester was built for, again, the Dutch Institute for Sound and Vision, uh, but they have not given it back yet, so we are working on that. Specific to video assets, we use FFmpeg to do, to do all transcoding services, which immediately defines the range of the videos that MediaMOS is able to work with. Anything that FFmpeg supports, MediaMOS supports, which in practice uh, boils down to uh, all non-proprietary formats. Uh, most proprietary formats are supported read-only. So you cannot generate a WM, uh, WMV3, but you can read one and convert it into H264 or uh, something else. Um, again, we, uh, we use Unix principles, so we try to use tools that do one thing and then glue them together. So we use FFmpeg, we shield it, and we shield it behind what we call transcoding profiles. And these transcoding profiles allow you to tweak the, well, like gazillion parameters that FFmpeg has to, to transcode video and audio from one form to the other to be set in a very friendly way. So there is a user interface, the media browser administrative backend, which allows you to set these predefined transcoding profiles friendly matter, in a friendly way. Um, as I mentioned before, these profiles are used when you upload new media into the system. So you can predefine that you want your, uh, your original strengths code into mobile and four <coughs> formats. Uh, you can also trigger retrans codes. Uh, once in a while a new platform comes up which needs a new codec. Uh, WebM, for instance, is a recent example 
can then just add this transcoding profile to the system and trigger a retranscode and uh, all assets will automatically be retranscoded. Which is what time saving. In order to do this, MediaMosa has a distributed drug processing architecture. Uh, we have uh, a master slave architecture where you have one master, multiple slaves, of course. And these slaves are just boxes, machines, and you can define how many cores each, each uh, slave has. And then the master will make sure that all the slaves are put to use to do this transcoding. So if you have a lot of transcoding to do, you can build a transcoding farm and uh, use media mode to, to satisfy the requirements of this. Uh, we support uploads. Uh, the most common types are post, of course, put. This is more shaky because most browsers don't, uh, don't support this. And for really large or massive uploads, we use FTP at the moment, uh, where you can put bulk uploads into a specific target directory and you supply a descriptive file tells you which metadata belongs to which media file and then it will automatically process this in batch. Um, for those of you who are familiar with uh, Surf Media, for instance, from SurfNet, uh, this carries with it the Academia collection, which is daily uploaded by the Dutch Institute of Sound and Vision using this uh, FTP technology. There is, of course, notification infrastructure to tell you about important events happening within the system, we have logging capabilities, and there are a number of features for statistics gathering and reporting in the system. <clears throat> um, a streaming solution is by, de by design not part of MediaMosa because we learned uh, early in the, in the architectural phase that most institutions have their own solution for this and we really would like to integrate with that rather than be forced to start using something new. So we have devised the system in such a way that we are able to operate uh, with most streaming solutions in a way that preserves things like authentication and authorization. So we have a ticketing system where MediaMosa checks for access to a specific video and then operates together with the streaming server to make sure that people get access to stuff they have access to and don't get access to stuff they don't have access to. Um, you, support, yes. You can have paid uh, videos on that system? Yeah. Sure, if you uh, devise this access control layer in such a way that you want, uh, want people to pay first, you can do this. And can it be with PayPal? Of course, yeah. Any, any web technology or credit cards, ideal, sure. I do too. Yeah. If you can support it in your front end, to have people pay and then grant access to the uh, back-end media for a specific period of time, it can be supported. Okay. Yeah. And uh, can it be for small, uh, small sites where only a few users can upload uh, files and that most of the people can watch the movies and that kind of thing? Sure, sure. Yeah. You, you can... Uh, we support websites for people who just want to broadcast for themselves to small communities, five to ten, up to really big media corporations. Okay. I think like this is something for me. I'm an I'm artist, I'm writer and artist, and we like that it can be something for presentations. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll show some examples later. Maybe you can recognize some use cases. For yourself. Okay. Um, regarding streaming, uh, we support progressive download out of the box, which is what YouTube does. So basically, when you install MediaMosa, you just have a working solution using a video player from JWay, JW Player, or VideoJS, and then you have a working system with progressive downloads. Of course, if you want to support multi-million streams a month, for instance, uh, you'll need something else. Um, MediaMosa uses uh, DBus, Challenge Response Protocol. This is used only at, in the very beginning to set up a trust relation between the front-end application and the back-end application. 
So <coughs> the backend the backend application has to know of the front end application and it uses the DBus challenge response protocol to establish this trust. This yields a cookie, which the front end will then use and reuse for a specific period of time to make REST calls to the backend. Um, we're quite happy and even proud that MediaMosa has unit tests for really everything. Um, the core dev always tells me that MediaMosa would not be there at all without these unit tests. We have unit tests for everything, for all bugs, for all features, for all uh, web interfaces. Um, uh, this even uh, grew to the point where the unit test result screen, the famous uh, red-blue uh, screen, uh, red-green screen of course, is now used as a status monitor for the system. So we can just continually run these unit tests and it will immediately uh, tell you if something goes wrong and pinpoint exactly where it is. It's fun to watch. Of course we have a community online. You can uh, find full documentation on mediamoza.org. Excuse. Um, that's all that's good. Um, some architectural prin principles, um, of course we are fully open source, everything we uh, write, uh, everything we use is open source, this is one of the principal guidelines for the system. Uh, we use open standards as much as possible. Um, we are now working on, uh, I've showed you some open standards and open protocols which are exposed to the outside and we are now working on the inner system to start using standardized uh, protocols and in there as well. Um, for instance, we are looking at the METS protocol for internal storage of the system. This is to work with some archival institutions. <coughs> Again, we use Drupal as a web application framework and we most, of, most of the time we also use Drupal to build frontends, but it's not necessary at all. Uh, we have people building .NET frontends, uh, Java, <coughs> for instance, uh, the Police Academy has built a .NET frontend. Uh, people from the University of Amsterdam have built uh, Java wrappers, which were later ported to Dalvik, which yielded the first uh, Android application, of course. So anything goes, Java, Lisp, Blackboard integration, we have basic LTI, LTI integration with Sakai, Blackboard, etc. Anything goes, as long as you can talk REST. It's a service-oriented architecture. Um, we use REST on the outside. As I mentioned, we have about 180 plus web services which provide you with a tool kit to, to build your, your video websites. Um, but MediaMosa is also built on REST on the inside. And this was done to make the system scalable. Um, it's, uh, the, the, all the functionality is split up into several main groups of functionality. And these groups can be distributed uh, along uh, multiple servers if needed. And some more <coughs> principles we used, Unix design principle, keep it simple of course, worse is better, and everything should be uh, in the source as much as possible. Some operational things, um, it's a standard LAMP application, nothing special about it. Um, which means it also runs on BSDs and Nginx and Maria, Varnish, everything. And which also means that you can use this knowledge to scale the application. There is no MediaMosa specific knowledge necessary in order to be able to, to scale it up or out. You just apply the, the, the existing knowledge in these fields, uh, the Apache, Nginx field, the, the operating system field, database field, etc. And just apply that. The system, yes? Uh, do, you, um, do you have to install Drupal first or can you uh, install it in, uh, at once? Just fork it on GitHub. What? Fork it on GitHub and it has everything on board. Okay. Yeah. Um, it has been in production at Surfnet since 2008. Um, I'll show you some examples later of sites running on this. And it scales. From very simply a laptop, you can uh, download a USB stick image, which is quite dated, I'm sad to say, but we will be updating this. You can download this USB image from the MediaMosa.org website, <coughs> stick it into your um, 
Intel device. It's not supporting Apple, but into your Intel laptop, AMD laptop, and you will have a complete running Media Mouse environment. Or just, of course, fire it up in your VMware or KVM or like what have you. Uh. And it scales up to Big Iron, so you can uh, you can have instances with uh, transcoding farms, multiple uh, Nginx instances, uh, big databases. We are working with uh, the University of Groningen at the moment to build uh, the Serve Media successor infrastructure, um, which will be hosted on their. VMX platform and it's <coughs> a massive, or ESX. Of course. Um, because it's fully web based, it means it's all, of course all web available on premise. You can install it locally and you can uh, buy it as a service. There are several parties providing it as services now, so you can just rent the REST interface like you do S3 or anything and uh, use that. It's been open source for about three years now under the GPL v2 license. Um, we've studied this uh, using some lawyers from Kennesnet even, I believe, and they came to the conclusion that this was the best license given the technology used because there's a lot in there. There's Drupal, there's FFmpeg, there's some Lua scripting code, there's all kinds of open source technologies, and GPL was the only license able to cover all of this together, which was a bit sad because if we had used uh, BSD, we would be able to start cooperating with the, uh, the what's it? Uh, ah, yes, the Matterhorn project. This was the big one. They are from the Berkeley University, and of course, they want BSD license because you can understand. Um, and so they, they went with their own solution, and they now started building their own stuff, which was a bit sad. Um, we've been bootstrapping since June 2009 using the Cathedral open source model and we are now slowly moving into uh, the Bazaar model um, which is related to the fact that we will be moving away from the Media Mosaic Project Management Committee and we are now erecting a Media Mosaic Foundation so that we can a more formal organization. You can find everything on Media Mosaic Bar, of course. So code releases, there are issue trackers, mailing lists, everything to be found there. As I said, we currently have a project management committee, which is seated by ServNet, Kennesnet, Institute of Sound and Vision and the University of Amsterdam. And as we speak, this month, there will be a Media Mosaic Foundation, and everything will transfer into this Media Mosaic Foundation. So ServNet and Kennesnet are cooperating on this, they are transferring things like the, the, the logo, the main name, the ownership of the code, everything into the foundation. And this is a very important stepping stone for us because this will enable us to <coughs> start cooperating more with international parties which are also quite interested in making this bit of software. Some examples, um, of course ServNet, ServMedia has been running on the University of Leuven and Twente. Uh, we've been cooperating with them to do some speech text technology. Um, ServNet, besides using it as a production video platform, has also been using Media Mosa a lot as a research platform to research new technology and to, to do technology scouts to integrate new stuff into uh, the video platform. The University of Amsterdam uses it as a central then they have built the Blackboard support, both uh, a direct Blackboard support module and later on they also generalized this into a LTI, the Learning Tool Integration Standard support. So Minimosa now has LTI support, which means it can be used as a backend for Blackboard, Sakai and things like this. Um, Groningen also uses, uses it as a central disadvantage digital asset management system. Um, we are currently working with them to uh, build a new service which will be exposed to all uh, educational uh, parties in the Netherlands to build the successor of the Serve Media platform which by by Serve. Leuven, 
Gent are working with it. The uh, University of Gent has the Boekentoren, which is a uh, very large book archive, uh, both physically and logically. Yes, it's a massive tower in the center of Ghent. Um, beautiful city, by the way. And they are using Media Moza to uh, organize the workflow of the digitalization process of all their uh, manuscripts, books, etc., which they are scanning and putting into the digital archive. So we support this workflow. We support the publishing of the derivatives of these original scans to websites of the University of Ghent. And we also support the transformation of these digital assets into uh, a long-term preservation standard, the Baggett standard, which is used to store these assets uh, independent of operating system, of media browser, of software, uh, in, a, well, in a long-term archive, so it can be used later on without using any software there is now. Um, Institute of Sound and Vision is the edit platform, the Let's 2.0 platform has been added to that. Kennisnet uses it for TaylorBlick, of course, the uh, BB Twin, created by SSA. Hippo CMS is one of the first external CMSs which has written a specific integration. So if you are using a Hippo website, which is a content management system, you can now very easily integrate MediaMosa services and media into your website. Um, if I remember correctly, most governmental websites in the Netherlands are based on Hippo. <coughs> also use outside... That, use that government media Mosa? Well, they are considering it to integrate it into their Hippo websites. Yes. Okay. Well, they're not using it yet. They are working on it. Also outside of the Netherlands and Belgium, we have users and builders and thinkers about around the system uh, for about two years, I believe, two, three years. Uh, universities in Italy have been using Media Mosa. Matteo uh, Bertazzo of Cinega has created a system that uh, connects all 51 Italian universities and allows them to exchange lectures, lecture recordings, materials, uh, slide recordings, etc. between these universities. Uh, as I told before, the University of Berkeley sadly chose not to use MediaMosa, but they wrote their own modern open cast system, but they still used MediaMosa as an architectural reference for what it's worth. And of course we integrate and we implement modern integration anyway. Yes. There's a lot of DAM on your slides, I don't know the meaning of DAM. Digital asset management. Um, the University of Oslo is the, was the first one to go live with uh, MediaMosa as a digital asset management service for their uh, 45k users and staff and um, they are in a consortium of all the region universities and they are like the front runner for this consortium so uh, within uh, the next year, years we will see adoption of Media Mosa in all universities in Norway. Recently we've been done business, we've been doing business with Akia, the commercial entity behind the Drupal Content Management System in the USA, they're in Boston. Um, we have worked with them to realize the new MSC Sports website, which is now using Media Mosa behind the screens. Uh, all uh, assets, all videos are centralized in this system and then distributed out to all, to all their websites from the East Coast, West Coast, etc. So that's, that was the first one and from that came the second one. This is a project we are now um, <coughs> today in order to get everything right and to start the development. is a major news agency based on the West Coast and we will be adding S3 uh, Akamai integration into MediaMosa in order to support their uh, well distribution of video to people in America. About 300 million streams per month will be doing. Will this uh, development um, return upstream? <coughs> yes, yes. Um, 
the, the, the most core development we'll be doing ourselves. Um, um, uh, we have the, the lead developers here in the Netherlands who originally wrote the system. They hire them to, uh, to create this, this core functionality. They will do some stuff themselves and they will contribute back. So effectively, Akia has become a main contributor to, to our code base, yes. And we work with, uh, for those people who know Drupal, uh, Akia has the, what's his name again, the, the CDN module, the guy who wrote the CDN module, and they work with Palantir. And Palantir is a company that has uh, the authors of the media module, the views module. So we work directly with them to create integrations with, uh, with the media Moza backends. And they give it all back to us. Yes. They wrote these specific extensions for, for NC Sports. I was uh, specifically uh, wondering about the uh, encoding uh, options. And, uh, you can, uh, I'm thinking uh, you use S3 for uh, uh, encoding or storage. So, uh, Terablink will we be able to use S3 as a storage uh, unit. Yes. Again, this is a new project. We are now in the phase of finalizing the bit for this. Uh, I don't even know what the name is of this new JTT yet. It's all going through IKEA, but it's nice new development, so I wanted to show it. And if this goes through, and it will happen, it's very American, it will be finished before the end of this year, <laughs> of course. Then we'll have S3 functionality in MediaMoza, and we'll be able to, uh, the use cases that you, uh, MediaMoza should be able to not only do transcoding on media which are local to the system, but to have people upload media to S3 and then uh, pull the media, transcode them and only put the end results back in order to save on costs on S3. And we're also looking at encoding.com, which is a service that provides, well, FFmpeg behind the screens, but it can give you very expensive SLAs if you, if you want those. And then we'll have the, the situation where um, people will uh, upload the media to MediaMosa we will send them to encoding.com and they will put them to S3. And from there we distribute them to the underlying CD. Cool. Um, some more examples. Let's see how much time we have left. Okay. Um, another big thing we did last year was the Avipel project in Belgium. This was a multi-year <coughs> research project which uh, was looking for a well, network-centric approach to digital preservation. So there were all the, the big memory institutions, uh, VTI, and everything that's mentioned here was uh, together for two years and they started looking for a good solution to have their national heritage, uh, digital heritage, preserved for a long time. They chose Media Moza and from that uh, came a lot of new projects. Um, the Baggett standard implementation was one of these. This is a standard as a term, which allows you to store assets with their media, that you, with their metadata, um, without any dependencies to the software used. So you can come back in 20, 30 years from now and just look at the Baggett package. You see the media, you see the metadata, and you don't need the media as a software version X, Y, Z to access it. It's just there. So another nice standard, which was a direct consequence of the Archipel project. Also support for the premise that the dictionary standard is now coming in new projects from, from the Archipel project, from successors of the Archipel project, I should say. And we are now in a uh, sponsored development process with the <coughs> Palms Theater Institute, the VTI, and they will quite possibly sponsor the development of support of the coding and transmission standard, which will allow us to rebuild the inner workings of Media Moza a bit to make it uh, use standards on the inside as well, not only on the outside, exposed to the public, to the users, but also inside, so it will make it easier for people to develop and work with Media Moza on the inside. Um, one Final roadmap thing that's uh, quite good to mention is the WCAG2 compliance. This is content accessibility, accessibility guidelines. We've worked with uh, the Dutch uh, 
Cantales Foundation and Bucky Mayer's foundations that are into providing uh, digital systems, information systems to pe people with audio and visual impairments. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the support for this standard is mandatory in the, in the Netherlands right now. It will become mandatory in the EU, but the Dutch government and government organizations are <coughs> should implement this. If you go to a school, you should be able to provide these systems to you, uh, complying to the standard. And we are working with Cantalos and Bucky Mayers to make Media Rosa fully WCG2 compliant. Um, that's a lot of implications. This is too detailed to go into now. So it has to do with subtitling, captioning of videos, speech to text, text to speech, uh, making annotations inside videos, um, audio descriptions, etc. All are supported uh, within the system. Yes, sure. Um, this would be. Um, the silly thing is that <clears throat> this would be one of the, the, the key features in order to, be, to allow the Dutch government and government organizations to start using Media Moza, but they didn't know it themselves. So we now have to work with them to implement it and then we can provide these services to them. Um, well, this is a very buzzword compliance slide, some cloud stuff. We support open social API. We do federated identity and group management, mostly with Surf Connect, the new platform by Surfnet. Um, we have special features for management of scale, storage, and bandwidth. Again, this is mostly concentrated on the platform level below the amount. So we have like uh, Puppet to manage large deployments. Uh, Puppet, uh, everything goes with it to manage large deployments. And we are looking. This is a roadmap thing to a way to connect multiple instances of Media Mosa together. Um, before we go to the questions, this is a question which is always asked, so I'll put it to you right away. How does it compare to YouTube? Well, the big, five big differences are that you have, of course, no advertisements. Um, you have complete control over the way the media are served to end users, um, you won't have uh, uncomfortable situations in which you get advertisements uh, which are not really suited to the media. You have authentication and authorization, so you get to decide which, is, what, uh, which media are served to whom. You get control of media types, so not only the high and standard definition, but also, for example, with paid and free, you get to decide what goes to whom again. There is guaranteed availability. Uh, if you have a Media Moza repository and website showing these videos, uh, like what YouTube is doing now with these uh, Islamic videos, nobody will be pulling it down because everything we put on YouTube, it's in their control. They will decide. And finally, you have the ability to store your media at a specific geographical <coughs> location, which is sometimes important for, for instance, government institutions which are bound by law to have all their assets on Dutch territory in order to be able to have them uh, under Dutch law. Uh, police, army are also very tense about where their media are, so they like to keep it on the spot and then put it on a public service. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I said, but nevertheless, no censorship. Mm -hmm. So that's it for me. Uh, any questions? Question. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, how handle handles it Flash and Silverlight? Uh, playing of video is um, something that has to do with the front end. So we offer solutions using standards, which is uh, Flash uh, JW player and Video JS solutions. The latter one is the most preferred because it will automatically detect your platform. And then, for instance, stream using HTML5 or Fiora uh, when your browser supports it, and fall back to Flash when you don't. Um, I've never come across anyone wanting to use Silverlight for this, but you should be able to support it. If you have 
a streamer which can uh, serve out a silver white player to your front end, you should be able to stream silver white. Okay, uh, does it is, uh, people that use uh, Linux be able to watch the movies on that system? <coughs> no, any platform really. Uh, because on Windows you get Flash, and on Apple you get uh, the HTML5, and on Linux you get Flash or HTML5, or native formats like Arc, Forbis, Fiora, and Chrome, etc. Okay. So we, we, we delegate the, the choice of player to the front end, and we, um, most of the time we use video.js for this. This is a very smart set of scripts which will work out the type of platform you, you have, and will give the best player to you. Okay. Windows support specifically for Silverlight, which is... No, no, I hate uh, I need Silverlight, <laughs> but uh, I want to know it. It's doable. Uh, I've seen people in .NET from the Police Academy doing it, but it was dirty. <laughs> of course. Yes. Um, how does it compare to, for example, Gallery 3 or uh, Resource Space? Yeah. Um, those, um, I, I think, Cultura goes in this list as well. Uh, those, um, those projects are more geared toward delivering a complete solution, uh, both front and back end. There is no, not much difference between front and back end. Uh, and of course, Cultura has an open source model, but is also paid as well. Um, we chose to explicitly provide the REST services and then leave the front end free. We provide sample uh, implementations. There is a reference front end, there is the medium as a site build in PHP. There are other implementations in other languages. The Java wrappers from the University of Amsterdam are available for free. So we leave the front end to you and we provide the 99% back end function that you need to build any video website and to support standards to do transcoding, etc. etc. <coughs> that's that's the big difference. We have front ends, but it's not the main thing. Anyone else? 